Alright, let's change it up with some narrated fights. Starting with the Dramiel. So in this fight, I was at a tactical uh, above the FD gate in PF. I had been trying to get kills off this blob for a little while. And I just happened to be sitting here wondering what's going on because... As you can see, that Executioner is moving to the Drag Bubble off the gate. Drag Bubbles are almost always 100k off the gate. Um, this one, I, I'm fairly certain, is 100k off the gate. Which means I can warp to the bubble and land right on top of the Executioner, uh, putting me 100k away from their fleet, or almost. So it's ideal for me, Executioner, I can kill really quick in a Dramiel. I can escape pretty good, my biggest threat being the, uh, the Tornadoes. If they get a good shot on me, I could be dead. Maybe that's what they're trying to line up here. They're trying to bait me in. You can see as soon as I came down, I missed the scram. He ran back towards his buddies, bringing me further into their optimal. More danger for me. i got to try to keep up my speed. I can't sit still. I can't approach like I would do on just a 1v1. If I had him completely isolated, I'd just approach here. But uh, in this case, I need to just orbit at 500. I need to turn off that micro warp drive because that's flaring my size. Make sure I have something selected. I had sun selected. As soon as he dies, or just before he dies, I need to align out because I got everything incoming. You can see that wolf is very close. I didn't warp. I can warp at any time, but I'm not pointed, so I'm not too worried. I know I'm faster than everything on field. So I'm going to hit my micro warp drive, and I am going to burn off the field. Here's the tactic I use solo and in fleets. A lot of times people have sloppy warps when they warp out. These people, I had noticed they had sloppy warps. So when they were warping out, I figured I'm going to grab this Atron and, you know, Talos Drake. Even if they are still on field when I grab this guy, they're not going to be able to do anything to me. And I can escape after I kill the Atron. So I'm just going to kill this Atron, piss off this fleet, and uh, have some fun. So the Drake point in the web, they're almost always disruptor in web. So I just hit micro warp drive and his web slowing me down from like 5,000 to 2,500. I'm still faster than him. I still escape fairly easily. His missiles, you know, are nothing. Especially once I get outside web range, I'm faster than his missiles just about. <clears throat> In this fight, you know, it's all about spotting the opportunities. You got to be able to uh, make fights happen, but you also got to be able to spot the opportunities when they're possible. You see this Thorax is 100k off the station. I check his age. He's 2012 uh, at the time. I think it was still 2012 when I was recording this, so I knew this guy was going to be pretty low skill, and it was worth a shot to try to fight a ship that I wouldn't typically fight with a Tyrannus, because usually with the Tyrannus you're fighting, you know, a Thorax, he's going to have Scram, Web, even with your Afterburner, he may still be able to track you, and with, uh, with his small drones, he'll be able to do pretty good DPS. This guy, no small drones. Where are the small drones? So, no web, no scram, no small drones. It's perfect. So, I mean, he's shooting something at me. I don't know what it is. But uh, he's not doing any damage. I'm not using my afterburner because the closer I am to him, the more damage I'm doing. I want to make sure I kill him in case his buddies are trying to warp out and warp back in or have something else somewhere else in the system coming. So, it's my priority to kill this guy as fast as possible. And to do that, I need to be as close as possible. So, if you orbit without your afterburner, you don't swing out as wide. And you're more likely to stay in that optimal, which for the neutron blasters on the dual prop Tyrannus, I believe optimal is around 1.1 kilometers. I could be completely off. Um, just a note, I take every chat request I get. Uh, no telling what comes through them. Sometimes I get people saying thanks for the guides. Sometimes I get people wanting to fleet. And sometimes I get people cussing me out for killing them. So here I'm just killing his pod. I was holding his pod for a little while. And I, I don't, I don't recall the reason why I was holding his pod. Maybe I was hoping that something else would come to try to save him. Uh, just figured, what the heck? Let's hold it for a minute and see what happens. Now we're getting on to the Algos. The Algos is one of my new favorite ships. I really enjoy flying the Algos. The drone DPS on this is massive. I'm gonna post the fit in the comments under this video. But uh, it's got two drone damage uh, modules, so it's like four or five hundred DPS out of this thing. It's awesome. Um, really, really awesome the amount of DPS you get. I load Nolan it most of the time because I want to be able to have some flexibility of range. And I've got the little crappy electron blasters on it, which don't have the best range anyway. So oftentimes it's better to try to kite, you know, since my damage can go any range and I'm going to be scramming them, I kind of think it's it's best to, to, uh, to sit off, you know, like a Thrasher. He's most likely autocannon. His major DPS is going to be within the first 2 to 3k away from him. If I sit more than 3k away from him, I'm going to avoid probably anywhere from 30 to 
40, maybe even 50% of his DPS. I wasn't expecting the sl Slasher to be here. I tried to fight him on the inbound gate. Um, even if he's with this Thrasher, not a big deal. Now you see there's two Thrashers and a Slasher. That could be a big deal. I can't take two Thrashers at once. I could take a Thrasher and a Slasher. But I land. You see that the uh, Thrasher has left. So, oh man, I, so did the Slasher. So now I've lost both targets. So, wait a minute. There was that other Thrasher on scan. So let's hope that he started his warp and, and didn't really figure out what's going on. And you know, he was coming maybe to fight that other Thrasher or coming to help him run this faction warfare plex. And while we're waiting for him to land, never mind. There he is. I'll tell you in just a second. So, with these faction warfare plexes, you sit right at the entrance. They land right on top of you. You're a scram ship. They come in at your optimal. It's awesome. Nothing bigger than a Thrasher can come in here. It's automatic free isolation. You see he tried to burn out and away, and he did get out of point range for just a second. I'm not really sure why he tried to burn away like that. Um, I kind of wish I'd have looked at his fit. Um, do you see now I'm pulling it back in? Maybe he was trying to run, and then once he was scrammed, after that first burst of micro warp drive, he realized he couldn't get away. So now I pulled it back in. I'm getting a little bit of gun DPS on him. Lots of drone DPS. You can see it looks like he's probably armor fit. For the armor fit guys, you're better off with you know explosive drones like warriors or Valkyries. Um, but you never know with a, a Thrasher. It's about half and half shield or armor. So trying to burn out the guns there. Excellent. Turn them off. And you can see I finished him off pretty easy there. That was a fairly simple fight. I didn't execute perfectly, and I could have done better. But overall, I mean, the Thrasher, up until now, king of the destroyers, nothing beats the Thrasher. That's how it used to be. If you had another destroyer, you just didn't fight the Thrasher. Uh, now there's something better than the Thrasher. It's like, it's, it's a huge revelation in the game. So there's something better. And uh, that is the Algos. The Algos is awesome. The, the, the strength of the ship you get for, I think, 20 million ISK fully fit is kind of awesome. It's, uh, it's really nice. So, while this is loading, this is about choosing targets, but some of the easiest kills in EVE Online right now, where I can go and get 5, 10 kills a night without any trouble, is in Faction Warfare space. I re make a route, a long route through Faction Warfare Space, about 10, maybe 15 jumps. And I go system to system, checking small outposts with my Algos or um, Harpy is another ship I use for it. It really does well at this. And I just own stuff. You can pretty much tell what's there before you get there. Once you're in there, it's, it's no big deal. And it's just awesome. So this is actually, this fight is, uh, there was a Vengeance on the gate. Now, I thought I was going in to fight multiple targets, and that's why I put choosing targets, so that's actually an error. But uh, you see with the Vengeance, he ran away. I wasn't so sure about the Vengeance at first. I was kind of, I was a little bit hesitant. You know, for one, you know, we're outside the Plex. Anything can warp to us. For two, not much warning. For two, he's a Vengeance. Vengeance is to take forever to kill. So he's got me scrammed in web right now. Or, well, pointed in web, no scram. My micro drive's still running. So I'm putting DPS on him. Luckily, he's active. It almost looks like he's an AAR here. Ancillary armor repair. Because he's repping really strong. You can see stuff landing, and then he's, his reps kind of disappear towards the end. But I don't know. Maybe not. You can see their fleet landed. It was it was Nor. They had a fleet coming in. Kitsune, Thrasher, Wolf, Harpy. Um, whatever. I got out in time. Uh, that was dangerous, though, to, to take on the Vengeance on the... On the entrance side of the gate. Um, it's, it's a shit that takes a long time. I got away with it because of the massive DPS of the Algos. Um, so, there's that. Um, I also carry ECM drones. I've never used them uh, yet, but I carry them just in case because there was one fight where I was pointed by a... Uh, uh, I forget what it was. I was pointed by some big ship that I couldn't kill, and I saw a blob coming in, and had I had ECM drones, I could have gotten away. So this is Nullsec. Nullsec is completely different than Faction Warfare. Um, Nullsec, it used to be better. 
now, especially up in this region, it's it's lame. Um, I'm never going back to to tribute. It's, it's terrible. In tribute, evidently, the only way to PvP is to have a falcon cloaked off the gate. Um, because every time I went to tribute, there was either a falcon cloaked off the gate, or um, even worse, they would warp in a rook in the middle of the fight. So I just gave up on tribute. There was no chance for a uh, for an actual fight, even if you were fighting outnumbered, not a chance. There was always at least one falcon on the field, if not two or three. So I mean, I have nothing against falcons, but you got to realize if you use them, people aren't going to fight you. People are going to get pissed off, and they're just going to just refuse to fight you. So yeah, you defended your space, that's fine, but you also got no PvP. So you saw a minute ago a uh, mana core uncloaked on the edge of the bubble. He got caught in it. I put out my drones. What's awesome about big bubbles like this, I don't even need to point this guy. All I gotta do is just get DPS on him. Point is absolutely unimportant. Lock him so he can't cloak. Get the drones on him. The drones on the Algos have a drone speed bonus, which means that, like, I just put out warriors. Those things move. They're like 10k a second. They're awesome. They're so fast at getting to the target and getting damage on the target. So you see right there, I just melted that mana core. I'm not really sure why he uncloaked at that point. Maybe the wreck uncloaked him as he was coming in. That was a wreck from another ship I had killed just prior to this. So a lot of times sitting around the, the exit gates to, to Nullsec is very successful for frigates and destroyers. But uh, you got to pick your Nullsecs, and this isn't one of them. You know, I think Syndicate's great. Um, I've had a lot of fun in uh, Providence. But uh, Tribute, it's lame. So this was on the way to Tazy and then Tribute. I happen to be going through, and something you'll notice a lot in the low sec before Tribute coming from Jita is a lot of noob ratters. If you want to kill noobs that have no idea what they're doing, who are... Um, not smart enough not to rat in, uh, in low sec, especially in a system with other people, then this is the place to go. I, I think I've gotten some of the most clueless players. Um, I've killed some of the most clueless players in this general area right here. Um, it's very close. It's the low sec closest to Jita, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, it's just, it's terrible. People go out here and start mining in their mining barges thinking it's no big deal, thinking it's safe, and they just they have no idea why they're out here, they have no idea what they're doing, and it's it's, it's kind of sad, and they need to learn more of the game, and, and this is one of the lessons they learn, is that you got to learn, if you're ratting in low sec or null sec, and you're in a system where you're not alone, you probably should stop ratting until you are alone. Beyond that, you should watch your scan, and if you see a PvP ship on scan, you should certainly stop rat ratting. So this guy feels safe. I don't know why. I thought he was in a belt. I warped the belt. Now I'm trying to find him my directional. Uh, I'm kind of confused here. Now he's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So uncheck use active overview settings. Hit scan. Oh, what is that? Pith wrecks. I know pith are the uh, anomaly wrecks in this region. So that simplifies things for me. Scan for anomalies. That uncheck use active overview settings, it's huge. It makes scanning so much easier to know what's around the target. It makes it so much easier to know what's going on and, and what the actual situation is and, and to actually find the target. Um, I've, I've come across PvPers who've been PvPing for five years who don't know about that trick. So it, it's a really big one that's, uh, it helps a lot. So you can see you can actually run your directional here inside your uh, solar system map. Not sure how that's going to change with upcoming scanner changes this summer, but uh, it's very convenient for this. So I find him really quick. I know which anomaly is in. I go into warp. I'm a little bit hurting from the rats. That sucks to go into a fight with only just over half my tank. Um, so I'm a shield tank. It's a shield buffer in this uh, Algos. But I feel pretty confident with this guy. He's a MOA. It's not that hard of a ship to kill in most cases, uh, depending on what you're up against. A really good MOA, um, I just have no chance. The MOA can be an awesome ship, but most of the time it's not. 
So you can see I'm going in. I think I checked his character age too, and I know he's pretty bad. But I just... It used to be I would only kill pirates. No, no, no. no. Don't be stupid. You're just wasting your time. This the game's about you know killing shit. People are here to, to fight and die. It's part of the game. And if you don't kill him, somebody else will. And if you don't kill him and nobody else does, then he's going to be out here tomorrow in a drake and he's going to lose even something bigger. And he's going to have a much bigger, more expensive lesson. So actually, after this fight goes down, I, I, I do feel bad enough to send him a little bit of isk. I don't know if this video will show that or not. But usually when I kill a pure noob, someone, I mean, he just sat there and waited like, like a minute or two for me to approach him. He had plenty of time to leave. He saw me on field. But he just he was clueless. I think he sent me a mail after I sent him the isk. And he said, I see you sent isk to me. So I understand that it was an accident. He even had a bounty on him. So he thought it was an accident that I killed him. I, I replied and told him, no, it wasn't an accident. Check out my site. Um, you, you should not rat in low sec uh, and feel safe. Because pretty much everybody who goes past is going to try to kill you. You can see his loot here. Not good. Right. Tech one. Garbage. Well, there's a couple tech two things. So that's it for the SFI Pro Guide bonus video. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, be looking out for the next guide I'm going to be releasing. The next one, I'm not sure. You can post your vote if you want. It's either between the Algos or the Harpy. Um, beyond that, I'm looking into a tornado guide after that, probably. But with all the changes CCP is making in the next, uh, in the next what, two or three months? I think I said a sentence missed. Next two or three months, I don't really know. So I'm thinking that uh, it's kind of up in the air beyond that. But I'll definitely be doing uh, Harpy or Algos Guide, and maybe both. So I'm interested to see what you guys think, or what you guys would like to see more, the Algos or the Harpy.